Hey folks, welcome back to Armored Core 6, where our preparations are complete and it is time to face the Ice Worm, the rogue sea weapon powered by Coral Technology, which threatens all of the corporations and the Rubicon Liberation Front. Uh, let's get into the briefing. Listen up, 621. This will be a joint operation led by Balaam and Archibus. The briefing's about to start. I want you to attend. First, some background before we go into detail. The intercorporate ceasefire is now in effect, and we will be carrying out coordinated attacks against the PCA. The targets are the enemy-occupied bases, the heavy warship fleet, and the recently activated... I'll cut to the chase. This is an all-out war against the PCA in theaters across Rubicon. And you all got the short end of the stick. You're here to take on the worst of our dirty work, hunting the beast of the ice field. Sure thing, Chief. Tell you what, I'll watch and let you know how badly that goes for us. Gun 5, you just volunteered yourself for the front line. <laughs> Moving on, let's talk about how we're going to neutralize the Ice Worm's Coral Shield. You'll be dealing with a layered barrier made up of a primary and a secondary shield. Archibus will provide the means to break the first layer. The state-of-the-art stun needle launcher. Aim for the face, and it will deliver results, I assure you. What about the second layer? R.A.D.'s cooked up just the thing. A neat little toy we call the Overed Rail Cannon. If we divert the spaceport standby power to the ORC, it should hit hard enough. Assuming we land the shot. You can leave that to me. I know a thing or two about sharpshooting. I'll oversee operations on the ground. A ragtag crew like this needs leadership. We could use some more suppressive fire. I'll send Chatty. That just leaves the question of who will be taking charge of the stun needle launcher. I know just the volunteer to go poke that beast with a stick. Gun 13. You get all that? Good! Time for another field trip! Okay, so a complex joint operation. Uh, we do have the needle launcher set up on our right shoulder. So we're going to destroy the Ice Worm, a massive weapon deployed by the Planetary Closure Administration. Archibus has provided us with a weapon to ensure the breach of the Ice Worm's coral shielding, the shoulder weapon VE-60 SNA Stun Needle Launcher. And this will conclude the chapter, so let's sortie and get out there. It's not every day you see competing forces working together like this. Now we're never 621. So the good news is the weapon doesn't work just against the the ice worm. It works against other MTs as well. It's time, six two one. You ready? This mission depends upon you, Raven. So we have to find a way to get in its face and fire the the needle launcher. That's going to be our goal. <laughs> Time to die. Professional outfit and you might live. What does that creep think he is? I ain't here because I wanna be. Alright, let's see. First. Got 13. Roll out that fancy gizmo that Argibus paid the big bucks for. We gotta get in its face. How am I gonna hit the face here? Hmm. It only it only brings its head up a little bit. Got a message from the chief for you. Enjoy the show, and don't forget to smile. He 
Yeah, okay. It, I, I, I have to get in closer before I shoot because... Yikes. Uh, because it takes a while for the projectile to actually reach the head. Where is it? It's coming out here? Okay, hold on. There we go. Primary shield disabled. Initializing ORC firing sequence. Connecting EML modules. Opening energy turbines. Output at 80%. Sighting correction A OK. 90, 95. Oh! <laughs> Got 13, the head's open for a direct hit! That freak actually did it. Did what? The bare minimum. This is just the first hurdle. The target's deployed drones, tourist. I'll handle them. Okay, we got some drones. I missed the second shot there. Let's see if we can get the worm again. Got the shield again. Shield loss confirmed. Preparing to fire rail cannon. Energy turbine output at 80%. Where's that shot coming from? 100%. 100%. Watch out for friendly fire. Secondary shield down. It's all yours now, buddy. So it's gone to its second phase or third phase. I had to use a repair kit there. It's firing lots of missiles now. Need to get a shot on his face. Come on up. Come on up. Okay, we hit it. Ooh, that was bad. That was bad. We hit it, but we need to hit it a second time. I'm out, Out of repair kits. Oh! <laughs> It came up out of the ground and hit me. All right, all right, all right. So now we know how the fight works. Uh, the trick is not being able to figure out exactly where underground it is and where it's going to pop up. I think I need to be maybe higher up on that final phase to avoid getting hit by it and probably, like, looking down. All right, we got to do the whole mission over again. Commencing operation with combined AC force as per the and we got to preserve as much of our health as we possibly can. Uh, when it goes into that third phase and starts firing all kinds of nonsense, we got to really be careful. Yeah, I need it. I need it to do that thing where it comes up and stays out. I can't get it on a quick on a quick like uh leap like it's doing now rail cannon is good to go don't die before i get a chance to fire buddy tourist got a message from the chief for you i see it underground enjoy the show not really and don't forget to smile okay here it comes 
Here we go. Shield loss confirmed. Initializing ORC firing sequence. Okay, so it's first. The first railgun shot should be coming out now. Output at 80 percent. Sighting correction A OK. 90, 95. Didn't get as much damage out of that as I would have liked. I think I wasn't close enough. I think I was probably getting a lot of ricochet. All right, we gotta get another shot on it. Gotta wait for it to come up. Okay. Got to get in close this time. Turbine output at 80%. Recalibrating sights. 90%. Output at 100%. Secondary shield down. Oh, he hit me! Damn it. Okay, not too bad. We didn't do as much damage as I would have liked. Alright, so they got drones coming up. Gotta have the worm come up here. But I'll pass. Don't do this to me, yet, Okay. I'm not going down first. Did I miss it? I missed it. I see Archimus at the top vest to provide running commentary. Gun 13, show him how actions speak louder than words. I missed again. Angle was wrong. Getting a little rusty. Getting a little rough here. Oh, come on! Man! Take two is not going well. I just can't seem to get a shot on it. Come on, give me a shot. What? What am I supposed to do there? Like, it takes a second and a half to fire. At least you won't have death to fear. Even toys have there we go. And why does it get to do that to me? God damn it. Confirmed. Preparing to fire rail kit. There's one rail... There's one repair Your kit wasted. Output at 80%. 95%. 100%. Watch out for friendly fire. Secondary shield down. It's all yours now, buddy. Wait, something's wrong. Okay. You gotta get away. What? We've underestimated this beast. All right, it's in its second phase. I was never going to hit. One, I 
need to get a hit. Taking significant damage. Might be checking out soon, tourist. Hit it, hit it, hit it. I lost my chance. God damn. Come on! I can't hit it! What's it doing? What's it doing? There we go. Its primary shield is getting stronger. I gotta hit it again. That should have hit it. Come on. There we go. Good work, buddy. All EML modules connected. Energy turbines at full capacity. Output at 80. All emergency valves closed. Disabling limiter. Come on. 100. Where is it? <laughs> okay. Woo. Get clear, it's gonna blow. You shit me. The freelancer really did it. Oh. Challenging fight, but uh a pretty epic one. The blast will contaminate the area. Get out of <sighs> Coral voices. Lost again. Raven. There's something I have to tell you. The coral. It's my family. My brothers and sisters. I am but a single wave. Born from the coral tide. A Lupaconian without a body. Okay, so that's confirmed. No she is... I was there for such a long time. A mind living inside the coral. Raven. You're the only one who... Uh-oh. PCA? Go get your rest, 621. Oh, good. Okay. Things are going to get busy. <laughs> it's my pickup. It's my ride. You did good. All right, that was a fun mission. Uh, Air and the Coral achievement. Uh, paid in 420. Burned about 100 in repair and ammo costs for a net of 320. Not bad. The temporary alliance between the Archibus and Balaam groups turned the tide of war. Devastating the Planetary Closure Administration forces and exiling them from Rubicon. Though it was the Ice Worm mission, led by Balaam, that dealt the decisive blow, Archibus, through their own engagements with the PCA, augmented their strength with seized weaponry.
The balance of power was broken. The scales tipped in Archibus's favor. And the Rubicon Liberation Front's hopes of fighting an exhausted foe were dashed. So Archibus Corps is the Vespers. The rival factions war for the Coral abruptly reignited. Well, that was to be expected. So Archibus is the Vespers. The conflict burned with renewed intensity. And Balaam is the guns, gun 13 and so forth. And the RLF, the Rubicon Liber Liberation Front, they're just on their own. So with the exile of the PCA, the corpse go back to fighting each other for control of the coral. Entering standard mode. Two new messages. Doing okay, 621. I'd wanted to let you rest some more. The corpse are on the move already. With the PCA gone, it's back to work, getting to where the coral's gathering. Do you remember the survey you carried out at Xylem? My friend analyzed the data and learned about a massive facility under the central ice field. Watch point Alpha. Turns out that the ice worm was defending the entrance to that place. It's time to let ourselves in. Raven, there's something you need to know. That friend Walter mentioned. The comms database has no record of the conversation he just told you about. This isn't about just finding the coral, Raven. He's after something more, and he's using you to do it. Here on Rubicon. Well, it's not like I have much choice in the matter, as far as I can tell. Registration number RB23. Call sign. Raven, your records have been updated. A-rank virtual encounters are now available in the arena. May these encounters further guide your technique. Okay, so we've made it to chapter four here. We've got some new missions, presumably. Underground exploration depth one, all right. Uh, another thing I'm interested in is the new arena ranks. We completed B, so A is now available. We've got 7, 6, 5, and 4. And then presumably the three S rank fights will become available at some point. Um, if we take a look in the parts shop, let's see what's new. So right here we have a new linear rifle. A high-powered linear rifle developed by Balaam. The lengthened barrel provides extra distance for rounds to accelerate. Allowing for high damage at long range. However, this comes at the cost of rapid fire potential. Let's take a look at the video for this weapon. So it's a charged rifle. We can see there 239 attack power, 285 impact compared to the Gatling guns. Uh, fewer rounds, obviously. Less weight. What else have we got here? Our boost speed goes up a teeny tiny bit. QB reload goes up a teeny tiny bit. So an okay rifle. Oh, I didn't mean to quite go there. Uh, let's see what else is new. We've also got the DFMG-02 Chang Chen machine gun developed by Dafang Core Industries. This weapon was designed for sustained combat potential and uses oversized ammunition magazines. Minimal need for reloading makes it well suited for suppressive fire. So compared to the chain gun, there's actually still a little bit higher damage output, 25 to 39, impact 25 to 40. Uh, but we lose the direct hit adjustment for when they're staggered or we're assault boosting. Uh, there's a little bit more recoil, shorter uh, ideal range and effective range by a little bit, less rapid fire, fewer rounds. Hmm. Ammunition cost is cheaper, and we gain some weight and speed. Let's take a look at what these look like. Yeah, okay. So, it's like, uh... It's, you're trading off some of the, um... The ammo and rate of fire for higher attack damage. We could consider grabbing a pair of these instead of what we have. Uh, what is this? The burst machine gun? I don't even remember looking at that. Oh, it's a burst fire. Okay. So the Chang Chens are new. What else is new? 
We've also got a HG-004 Ducket handgun. So much higher at attack power and impact, for that matter, uh, at the cost of needing, again, closer range. But we get a little bit more speed and less weight out of it. Let's take a look at this, the handgun. So it's not rapid fire, but one shot. It's like a, like a hand cannon, almost. Interesting. This is another new one, a burst handgun, the MAE-211 Sampu. Similarly to the to this handgun, it's you trade off, you know, range for power. This one's a little bit less. Total rounds 156 compared to 98. So again, there's trade-offs in whatever you do. This fires two shots instead of one. What else? Anything else is new? Uh, the little gem bazooka. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. So it's a slower moving projectile, but obviously explosives are very powerful. Uh, and again, we need, uh, it's got a little bit longer of an effective range, actually. But I prefer having um, my explosives on my shoulder and having like a stream of projectiles that I can track with the chain gun. So I actually think I'm probably going to keep those, unless we find something else. We have a jamming bomb launcher here, the MAT-223 Kyoriku. Jamming round launcher, developed by Baos. Craft caught in the blast will suffer from compromised lock-on capabilities. However, exploiting this trick calls for considerable tactical finesse. So this one doesn't do a lot of damage. It prevents them from locking on. I don't know if that's something we would use. What else do we have here? A new laser rifle, a single barrel laser rifle designed by Archibus ADD. Fundamental performance has been improved in order to aid the effort against planetary closure administration. That looks like something fun for the laser tank, maybe. You can charge it up too. Hmm. We've also got a laser shotgun. Ooh. Laser shotgun developed by Schneider dominates at close range with diffuse laser beams. Charge the weapon to concentrate the beams and produce a thrusting spike of energy. I want to see this one. Yeah, I think that goes on the laser tank. Wow. And that's it for new handheld weaponry. Yeah, let's buy a pair of these. Oh, what is this? A laser lance? Uses the thrust of its internal booster to launch into energy-based piercing attacks. Booster thrust can be increased by charging the weapon. Let's see this one. Oh, that looks fun, too. Let's buy that for the tank. There's also the new linear rifle. The Chang Chen's. The Ducket and the Sampu. As well as the Little Gem. And the Kyoriku. Plus the laser rifle and the laser shotgun. Okay. For back units, we now have... Let's see. Uh, I think this is new. Yeah, the Pulse Shield Launcher. Deploys pulse barriers that cancel out incoming fire. Craft that come into contact with these barriers suffer major ACS strain. How does this work? Oh, interesting. But it's not useful against mobile opponents. We've got a diffuse laser cannon. Spread laser cannon developed by Archibus. An enlarged version of the standard laser shotgun. Reimagined as a back-mounted weapon. Concentrate to charge the laser. Oh, I want a pair of those, I think. And then the spread bazooka, scattered bazooka developed by Balaam, scatters small shaped charges that deliver overwhelming impact potential. Yeah, pretty high area. Easy, easy to not miss. Uh, laser turret. What is this? When launched, it hovers in place to provide supporting laser fire. Turret is stationary and does not follow the user like orbits. Calling for some planning for optimal deployment. So it just kind of head like gets out there and starts shooting. That's interesting. Plasma Missile Launcher. That's okay. Active Homing Missile Launcher. Two, two missiles. Anything else new? Uh, a 16 missile split cell launcher. Two way, two cell, eight way split missile launcher developed by Furlong. Missile split before contact. Yeah, so we have an eight cell of those, I think, on, uh, on the, on the, uh, the Raven? That might be worth picking up. Yeah, all right, let me get... This is the laser shotgun? Yeah, I'm gonna get one of these. And I'm gonna get that... Yeah, 16 missile launcher. And then we'll get the same pair over here. 
Spread bazooka. Stun needle launcher is new, but we know what that is. The diffuse laser cannon. Buy that. And then the 16, I want one of those. Okay. And then we've got, I think, a new head here. The Veril. High-end model, strong performer with hefty energy footprint and features an intimidating spider eye design chosen to suit the tastes of the Red Gun's commander. This has higher AP at the cost of, yeah, speed and weight. Oops. Uh, we also have the Fermeza and the 44A. This is a heavyweight additional uh, am uh, armor. 11 2, 11 4, 11 4, 11 6. Maybe I'll pick up one of these. Hmm. Uh, we've got some new cores. Heavyweight core part designed by Archibus ADD. Enable defiance of the PCA. This model features excellent generator output adjustment and solid defense against damage of all kinds. That might be nice for our tank. Uh, in terms of legs, we've got a, a new, or arms rather, we've got a new pair of heavyweight arms. Solid defense, okay. Uh, for legs, what do we have? A new tetrapod pair. Design division was all but held at gunpoint to produce a model that satisfied the Red Gun's demand for highly mobile AC platform, also capable of supporting heavy weaponry. So we can increase our AP, but it will be at the cost of speed for the tetrapod model. I don't think we want to do that. Um, in terms of boosters, we have a new one here. Second generation booster developed by Furlong Dynamics. Prioritizes movement speed over quick boost thrust, making good fit for assemblies that are designed for endurance. Hmm. So more thrust and speed in exchange for fewer quick boosts, I guess. I'm not sure about that. Uh... This, I think, is a new FCS with a great deal of long-range uh, support, which could be good in certain cases. And then we've got some new generators here. Uh, circulating current generator. Higher EN recharge and supply recovery for lower total EN capacity. But more boost speed. What about this one? Uh, more capacity. Hmm but lower firearm specifications. All right, I'm not too sure about some of the more fine details of some of the other parts, but the weapons we can definitely look into. So we're going to go ahead and load up Raven. And we're going to put on... We're going to swap out... No, we're not going to swap out the shotguns. We're going to swap out uh, the eight-way split missiles for the 16-way split missiles. And I think we're going to leave that as is. Let's save that change. And then we're going to overhaul the weaponry of the laser tank here, the Rhino. So we're going to swap out the plasma rifles for our new... Uh, what was it that we bought? The laser shotguns? Wait, was this what I wanted to put on here? No, there's something else. Assault rifle, Gatling gun, shotgun, laser shotgun, plasma rifle. No, because the it was the back units that I wanted to put the diffuse laser cannon on, right? Yeah. I want that. And I want that. But I think there was something else I actually forgot to buy for the laser tank here. What was it? Grenade launcher, napalm bomb launcher, jamming bomb launcher, stun bomb launcher. Laser rifle. Laser shotgun. Laser handgun? You know, we haven't used a lot of pulse guns. Maybe we'll try maybe we'll try a pair of these. Uh was it the late no, it wasn't the laser handgun. Was it the laser shotgun? Did I want to go with, like, a full shotgun build? Maybe I did buy these. Uh, but we have credits to spare. Let me try. So, this... This, I believe, is an energy weapon. 
This has low impact. Hmm. So if we've got the laser shotguns, maybe I want something that's more... Maybe I want something that's more, uh... Kinetic-based or explosive. A new shotgun? The Sweet 16? What is this? Special shotgun developed by R.A.D. Strictly speaking, this unique weapon is not a true shotgun as its area attacks are enabled by firing individual projectiles from multiple barrels simultaneously. I think... I think I want something with a stream. Yeah, something like that seems good. That's new, right? The Chang Chen? We had the burst assault rifle. Yeah, let's try the Chang Chens. Let's buy a pair of these. Where is that? So the tank will have laser arm cannons, and then... I guess it's not going to be a laser tank anymore. But I want to uh, I want to get some kinetic energy in there. Okay, so we should try that out. Uh, I've spent a good ten minutes here doing builds, so you guys can see. I don't normally normally I do that type of thing off camera, but I figured since we just got a bunch of new parts, you guys would maybe like to see me doing my build predictions or or working out builds. Uh, I still need to spend a lot more time researching the additional body parts, the generators the heads, the FCS, etc., and so forth. But uh, let's go into the arena here and try out our new tank against G2 Nile, Deputy Commander of the Red Guns, the Balaam Group AC Squad, formerly the commander of the Balaam Security Force, a paramilitary police organization that preceded the formation of the Red Guns. Nile distinguished himself with an exceptionally high arrest rate, and in those days, the only man he never managed to put in handcuffs was Michigan, then the commander of the rival furlong armed fleet. Having failed to arrest the man, he instead settled for a friendly drink with his old nemesis. All right, so we got the laser arms, or laser shoulder things, the laser shotguns, which can be charged up. And then we've got the Chang Chens. Aptitude evaluation program, number seven. You have now reached rank A. Subject AC, deep down. Call sign, gun to Nile. Commencing evaluation. Main system. Activating combat mode. Okay. Where's our boy? Here he comes. I hit him with the shotguns. Hey, nice. Salt boost plus charge shoulder shotguns worked really well. That was a this is a fun build. I actually quite like this. Well done. Uh we gave up a lot of weight on the miniguns to get these uh to have the new Chang Chens instead, but they still let me keep up that like steady stream of damage. That I quite liked. I thought that fought that fight went pretty well. Okay, so there's 7A finished. We get four more OST chips plus his AC data. And his emblem. And we've got time left for maybe one more arena fight here. So let's go. Let's keep this going. Uh, we'll actually load up the new... Uh, I think I need... I'm not sure I saved the changes here. So let's do that. And let's load up Raven. So he's got the new 8-cell missile... The new 16-cell missile launchers. We'll see how they do against the next arena combatant. Uh, which is going to be V2 Snail. Deputy Commander of the Vespers, the Archibus Group's Augmented Human Squad, after receiving Generation 8 augmentation surgery, Snail continued to receive follow-up treatments as new technologies entered the mainstream so as to make their merits his own. 
Many augmented humans have died in order to assure the safety of his repeated adjustments. All right. So this is mostly going to be a familiar type of fight. We just have the new 16 cell launchers uh, as opposed to the eight cells we used to have. So we should get more damage out of our missile uh, deployments, assuming they hit. Subject AC, open faith. Call sign, V2 snail. Commencing evaluation. Main system, activating combat mode. All right. Where's our boy? He's not doing well. We got him. Okay, nice. That went very well and pretty fast, too. I was able to use my pulse armor uh, offensively there, too. I thought well that went pretty well. That was very fast, so we actually have time for one more. We'll do that. Uh, I'm not sure. Do I want to use this build or go back to my new tank build this build we're familiar with we've played with it a lot the only thing that really changed was the number of missiles we're firing so yeah i'll swap back to uh the rhino for this final arena combat and we'll check out the penultimate uh rank a fight chartreuse an independent mercenary who arrived on Rubicon around the time that the Coral response was rediscovered. Held to be a member of Branch, a hacktivist collective active in the Rubicon system, Chartreuse is said to have defeated, or excuse me, dealt a critical blow to the closure system during the, pilot, uh, during the plot to attack Station 31. Branch is made up of a rotating group of four people, and Chartreuse is believed to be the second oldest of the current roster. So, an independent hacker fighter uh, who dealt a blow to the Planetary Closure Administration. We haven't met him or worked with him, so it'll just be an interesting fight. Arena Combat Aptitude Evaluation Program, number five, rank A. Okay, he's a tank build as well with some heavy shoulder armament, it looks like. Seven. Yeah, it looks like he has a lot of explosives. Call sign, Chartreuse. We're gonna, not, uh, we're gonna wanna stay off the ground as much as we can when he's firing those. Commencing evaluation. Main system, activating combat mode. All right. Fairly well, I thought. We're getting hit by too much of his stuff. AP at 30%. Okay. Nice. Yeah, he was strong. Uh, probably not the best. Because, because he had so many explosives and we were on the ground so much, he did a lot of damage. We probably could have done better in that fight with... A more either either of our other two builds but we still managed to get there in the end all right well folks uh with that we've got 14 ost chips which i will pump into my damage output uh but that's gonna be it for this time as always thank you so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed today's battle against the ice worm uh our sort of 15 minute exploration of our new parts and my build um strategy as well as testing them out against our arena combatants when we come back next time, we'll get started on the Chapter 4 missions with Underground, underground Exploration, Depth 1. 
will penetrate the subterranean facility and destroy the Nepenthes energy weapon platform. Look forward to that. Uh, and otherwise, we'll see you next time. Take care.